Under the Speaker's announced policy of January 4, 2021, the gentleman from Utah, Mr. Owens, is recognized for 60 minutes as a designee of the minority leader. Mr. Speaker, I ask unanimous consent to address the House and advise and extend my remarks. Before I get started, I'd like to yield five minutes to, edu to the education and labor leader, Dr. Virginia Fox. Without objection. I thank the gentleman from Utah for his generous uh, gift of time to me today. Mr. Speaker, I was encouraged to see George Washington University, GW, reverse its decision to censor posters highlighting the human rights abuses of the Chinese Communist Party, CCP. The Olympic-themed posters bring attention to the CCP for its oppression of Tibetans and Uyghurs. They also denounce China for undermining democracy in Hong Kong, implementing an authoritarian surveillance system over its own people and for its dishonesty and handling of COVID-19. Calling these posters racist is absurd and a dishonest attempt to pander to an authoritarian regime housing ethnic mi minorities in modern day concentration camps. They aren't promoting racism, but decrying it. Allowing students to stand up for human rights and democratic values on college campuses should not be a point of controversy. Condemning ethnic cleansing and genocide is not controversial. Condemning the erosion of privacy is not controversial. Condemning the destructive of destruction of democratic values is not controversial. In fact, condemning these crimes should be something that unites all Americans. The individuals who hung these posters are braver than many pundits and politicians who are turning a blind eye to the CCP's atrocities. We should celebrate their courage, not punish it. Too many universities tout free speech policies, but punish those with different viewpoints for simply speaking their mind. We must allow our college and university campuses to be places that welcome free speech and an open exchange of ideas. Speech meant to incite violence is never acceptable and I condemn racism in all its forms. Yet we must ensure that we aren't letting politically motivated groups cry wolf whenever someone says something they may not want to hear or speaks up for the millions who cannot do so themselves. If cries of racism can be weaponized to silence political opponents, then our country will be ruled by the dictates of political correctness and a fear of censorship instead of rational free thought. If we want to stay a self-governed and free country, we must protect our most fundamental rights. This includes the freedom of speech. Colleges and universities must protect the free and open exchange of ideas. Silencing students and professors for challenging the status quo makes university officials no better than the Chinese Communist Party. In the end, GW made the right decision and should be commended for it. I hope other schools will learn from this and support free speech from the start. With that, I yield back to the gentleman from Utah. 